Skylar Diggins-Smith is in the news with her recent blow-up with her teammate Diana Taurasi. I thought it might be a good time to do a 10 things you should know about her, as it might give some perspective on her current situation with Taurasi and how it might play out. Before we get started, if you wind up enjoying the video, then please give it a like. As well, the best way to get more content is to subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get to it. Number 10, where the love of basketball developed. Skylar Diggins-Smith grew up in South Bend, Indiana, just eight miles away from the University of Notre Dame. Skylar came from a blended family and was the oldest of four children. She credits her mom as being her role model, as she was a strong, independent woman who had it together and did not take any S from anyone. Basketball was the last sport she took up as a kid. As Skylar says, her mom was five foot nothing and initially had her playing sports such as gymnastics, tumbling, and cheerleading, which she was familiar with. Diggins Smith's stepdad was a basketball player and ran the rec program, which gave Skylar access to a gym. Diggins Smith said, I really developed my passion for basketball getting to go to the club. I just remember telling my mom, just a few more minutes, just a few more minutes, and her having to drag me off the court like every day. I just never wanted to leave there. It was just a safe haven in our community. In high school, she led her team, South Bend, Washington, to a record of 102-7. and The team won the state championship in 2007, and Diggins was named the player of the game with 27 points and 17 rebounds. She was also Miss Indiana basketball. Number nine, home or away? As a kid, Skylar wanted to play basketball for Notre Dame as she watched them win the 2001 championship under Muffet McGraw. The South Bend native had her pick of colleges, and at the top of her list were Stanford and Notre Dame. At the time, Stanford was going strong, and Notre Dame had struggled a bit, as they'd only made three Sweet 16 appearances in eight seasons after winning the 2001 title. Diggins chose Notre Dame as she wanted to be close to home so her family could attend games. This worked out as the accolades soon followed as she led the Fighting Irish to consecutive NCAA runner-up finishes and a Final Four appearance. Muffin McGraw was effusive with praise, saying of Diggins, A lot of it was her presence. We met on campus right before her freshman year, and we talked about things that seemed so mature to me. And then on the court, I think I met my match in terms of the most competitive person I've ever had. Number eight, where Diggins got her Smith. Not only did Skylar have basketball success, but she also met her future husband, Daniel Smith, at Notre Dame. Smith also went to South Bend High School and went to Notre Dame on a football scholarship. He hoped to play in the NFL, but his future changed when he suffered a bad ankle fracture, which wound up refocusing Smith on his passion for art. He started selling his artwork online and started designing logos for clothing brands. He opened Dope Men Studios in Dallas, Texas, and his work has also been shown in music and art festivals. Skylar and Daniel have been together since 2014, and in June 2016, Smith proposed to Diggins during one of his art exhibits. The pair tied the knot in April 2019. After getting married to Daniel, she changed her jersey name to Diggins Smith on the court. Skylar showed off her jersey on Instagram, captioning it, Diggins, a two-time WNBA All-Star and guard for the Dallas Wings, will now go by Diggins Smith. Still to this day, Skylar refers to Daniel as the biggest part of my support system. Number seven, the sponsors and Rock Nation Sports. Diggins Smith was ahead of the game off the court as she was seeking sponsors before NIL came about. She was the first woman to sign up with JC's Rock Nation Sports, which helped her ink high-profile partnership deals with Puma, Body Armor, and Clorox. These brands have allowed her to stay home during the offseason versus having to play basketball overseas in the offseason. Number six, the third pick is part of the three to see. Diggins Smith was the third player selected in the 2013 WNBA draft, which was labeled the three to see, which included Brittany Griner and Deladon. Diggins Smith was proud of her draft class, saying, Those are living legends, as I said, and future Hall of Famers, Olympians, and just two iconic people in the sports period. Number five, Diggins Smith had a down up, down start to her career in Tulsa. Diggins Smith's rookie year was a struggle, as she only averaged five points and three assists a game, and Tulsa finished last place in the Western Conference. She said as much on Media Day in 2021. My rookie season was underwhelming to say the least. Very character building. Getting drafted to Tulsa, obviously we didn't have a lot of resources. Her sophomore season was her breakout year as she averaged 20 points and 5 assists and 2.5 rebounds and 1.5 steals per game. She joined a league company with Diana Taurasi and Cynthia Cooper as the only players to average at least 20 points and 5 assists in a season. Her third season was set to be her best as Tulsa rocketed out to an 8-1 record with Skyler leading the team. But her season was cut short as she suffered an ACL injury against the Seattle Storm with only 44 seconds left in the game. I feel like I got hurt right at the peak of when I was really coming on strong in the league in Tulsa, and I felt like we might not lose another game. Number four, putting in the work. When Diggins Smith initially got to the WNBA, she initially took everything to the basket. Her second year coach, Fred Williams, helped develop and round out her game, saying, I was telling her, you got to develop being a triple threat player, Williams said. She kept trying to challenge
challenge on drives and control the dribble penetration. And I said, you're going to have to develop a short mid-range jump shot, and then you get to develop a three-point shot from the outside. It's going to take you about a year, year and a half to do that. So each year, she worked on it during practice, after practice, and before practice. In the offseason, her and I would get together with a lot of sessions together, one-on-one to get some workouts in, and it really, really helped her. Over time, Diggin Smith became a true point guard. She put together a video of how Chris Paul uses the pick and roll, and it almost looked like a female version of Chris Paul running it. Number three, postpartum depression and unhappy in Dallas. In 2016, the Tulsa Shock would be no more. They moved to Dallas and rebranded as the Wings. She recovered from her ACL injury and had a solid comeback year, playing 27 games and ranking second in the team in points and assists with 13-3, and three, respectively. In her second and third seasons in Dallas, Diggin Smith's game flourished as she made the All-Star team each season and helped Dallas make the playoffs where they wound up losing in the first round each season. Dallas then went bad in 2019, which coincided with the birth of her son in April 2019. Diggin Smith spent two months away from basketball. She spoke out about postpartum depression and then tried to bring awareness to the inequalities across the league. She was critical of the lack of resources the Wings and the WNBA provided for her after childbirth. Just simple things were missing, like a private area to breastfeed or pump milk, instead of doing this in front of the entire team in the locker room. Her outspokenness came with immediate backlash as she was labeled a quitter as someone who was giving up on her team. She also called out the team owner, Mark Cuban, for not attending team games. In January 2020, Skyler announced that she was done with Dallas and a sign-and-trade deal was completed with the Phoenix Mercury in February 2020. Number two, the trade to Phoenix. Will the big three work? Many expressed doubts that Diggin Smith, Tarasi, and Griner, three of the biggest personalities in women's basketball, could successfully join forces for one team. There were a lot of questions of, could we balance these personalities, Diggin Smith admitted? Could we play together? Could we work together? But Diggin Smith was adamant that it would work, saying, we're all cut from the same cloth. That it could work was proven during the Mercury's 2021 campaign, which Diggin Smith described as her best season yet. From an individual and team standpoint put together, in just their second season playing together, Phoenix's Big Three led the Mercury to the WNBA Finals, where they lost to Candace Parker and the Chicago Sky in four games. Diggin Smith and Tarasi spent their offseason training together. Number one, the wheels fall off. And can they be put back on? So 2022 was going to be the year for the Mercury, but so far the season has gone to hell. This started with Brittany Griner being detained in Russia. This has resulted in the team getting off to a slow start, which started when they opened the season with a 20-point loss to the Aces. With two strong-willed players such as Diggin Smith and Tarasi, it was only a matter of time before frustration boiled over, which happened when Phoenix took on the Aces again. Diggin Smith and Tarasi got into each other's faces during a timeout. Now the question is, is this blow-up just a storm in a teacup and able to be put down to the heat of the moment, Mercury coach Vanessa Nagard addressed the interaction following the game and put it down to passion. Others aren't so sure. Diggin Smith missed the next game with the flu. Some speculated this might be the DT bug. A cryptic tweet sent out by Diggin Smith read, Be careful what you tolerate. You are teaching people how to treat you. So at this stage, the future is unclear. Will the big three play again, or will Diggin Smith be shipped out for clashing with longtime Phoenix goat Tarasi? To be determined. However, my gut says... This is done, and Diggins Smith will have a new home in 2023. What do you think? Was this just a minor flare-up? And will the big three rise again? Or do you think Tarazi might be pushed out to retire, and Phoenix will rebuild with Griner and Diggins Smith? Would love to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give it a like, as it helps others find my content. As well, the best way to help the channel is to subscribe, which allows me to produce more content.